We've had several episodes recently about TikTok, A Musician's Guide to TikTok, and stories about how artists are using the platform. But one thing that sets TikTok apart from other social networks is how much it's driven by trends. And understanding those trends can really help you promote your music. So on today's episode, we're going to talk about all those trends. You're listening to the CD Baby. CD Baby. CD Baby. DIY Baby. Oh. Musician. <laughs> Musician Podcast. Hey there, and welcome to episode number 323 of the CD Baby DIY Musician Podcast. My name is Kevin Bruner, and joining me is Chris Robley. Chris, hey, what's how up? you doing? I'm great. I'm really excited for this episode. Um, for the reasons you already said, we're going to get into the memes, the trends, the the speed at which this platform travels. Excited. Yes. Yes. That's one thing that definitely TikTok from the beginning was definitely set itself apart. I mean, there's always been trends on social networks, but I think with t- TikTok, we see them come and go so fast and, and recognizing those trends and being able to jump on top of them and and, uh, you know, Ride the Wave can be very helpful with uh, your music promotion ex- uh, music promotion efforts. I think yeah. I almost said exploits. <laughs> well, and, and given that neither you nor I are really TikTok natives, we have a TikTok native with us. Today yes, to, yes. To lead us yes. through this wilderness of mystery and speed. Yes, we've got uh, Rachel, our social uh person here at cd baby joining us we'll give her bring her on in a second and let her do a proper intro because she's an artist as well before we get to that i just want to remind you to subscribe to the podcast if you're hearing this and you haven't clicked that subscribe button please do and uh it's on all the platforms spotify apple podcast apps um youtube and for this episode we have a lot of tiktok videos we're going to be showing so if you want to see the videos uh, you are going to want to watch the episode on YouTube. And so uh, and while you're there, go ahead and subscribe to our channel, hit the notification button, and you won't miss anything. And uh, yeah, the videos have been very popular lately. Uh, lots of people watching on YouTube. Yeah, it's great. Uh, for those not on YouTube, I was just going to say, if some of these TikTok examples are very visually dependent, I'll probably cut that part out for the audio version. And then you'll just, you know, jump to hearing us discuss what happened in the video potentially. But uh Go to YouTube for the full effect. Yes, yes. So quick table of contents for this episode. We're going to do, we're going to bring Rachel on and we're going to let her introduce herself. And then we're going to do a quick recap of the last few TikTok episodes we have. Just like a quick, like, hey, go reference these uh, episodes because uh, we talk about these things that help reinforce this episode. Then we're going to be talking TikTok trends. We've got a couple scams to uh, scam emails to to read and some regular emails. So it's going to be an action packed episode. All right. With that said, let's bring on Rachel. All right. Hello. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) Nice to be here. Rachel, uh, and is Behringer the correct way to pronounce your last name? Yeah. So like the audio, like the, like the music equipment company. Yes. Behringer. Yes. Yes. So, how you've been with CD Baby? Has it been like a year and a half now? Oh my God, no! It's been uh, probably a little less than nine months. Really? Why do you think it's been longer? That's, Maybe that's how warped time is these days. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's re- yeah. No, it, it's weird because uh, Rachel, uh, you live in in Minneapolis, correct? I do. Yes. And and so you've been working with us and doing things for a while. And at the conference this past year was the first time we got to meet in person. And that's just been this weird reality uh, in the post-pandemic world that having a lot of coworkers that you work closely with that uh, you don't meet for a while. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But we're we're excited to have you making your debut here on the podcast. Uh, You're an artist as well, and you do a lot of the social media for CD Baby. So why don't you give us a quick little background about you and your music, uh, and then we'll we'll dive into the topic. Yeah, for sure. I just want to start by saying that I've been listening to the podcast since way before I started working here. Um, it's been super valuable for me. And so to be able to be on the podcast is like, whoa, what, <laughs> what is what pace is life moving right now? I don't know. But um, yeah, so I am a singer songwriter, guitarist, uh, trumpet player as well. Uh, I've put out a few albums and some singles and uh, just really enjoyed 
making art as a musician and uh, being in the in the music space. Um, gosh, so I, I also I play guitar in a band called Delicate Friend. We have some music coming out very soon. So in uh, early 2023, we'll have some some tunes coming out and sit in with some friends. My friend Garrett plays some great folk music. I sit in with him on guitar. And uh, yeah, I've I started here in like March. Um, I'm getting flashbacks, honestly, to the interview process uh, over Zoom for this job because Chris is in that interview. And, you know, I'm, I'm a little nervous, to be honest. So I was nervous to do that interview uh, for the job. And then now I'm like here on the podcast. It's kind of wild. Life is weird. But. I was going to say dreams do come true, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> well, and pertinent to the topic of this conversation about sort of memes, trends, TikTok culture, mm -hmm. being privy to that interview process and resume all that stuff i can say part of the reason that like uh you have the job i guess is that it was like oh look not only is there this professional qualification but she's really good at tiktok like you just clearly <laughs> were doing it for your own music you knew how it just seemed natural to you the sort of vertical video thing that's a very vague way of trying to pay you a compliment, but uh... no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, as a as a digital native, someone who had a Facebook account at like I think I was like ten when I got my Facebook account, and I was like eleven when I got MySpace. You know, I've I've been very much online for the majority of my life now. So uh, yeah, I enjoy it. The internet's fun. Well, and also good to get another redhead on the show. Heck uh, yeah, that's the, that's the most important <laughs> thing. <laughs> All right. Well, Chris, you've got a, a, an outline for us. And I know this conversation uh, relies heavily on a lot of video. But um, before we dive into the, the TikTok trends and talking about trends, I just wanted to give a quick recap about some of the episodes that we just dropped recently that are good supplemental material for this. Um, if you haven't uh, checked them out, we had um, Musician's Guide to TikTok. That episode was like a month ago. I should probably pull up these episode numbers while we're talking. Um, so we had the Musician's Guide to TikTok that kind of gives the lay of the land, how it works, some of the functionality. If you're new to TikTok, definitely check that out. It goes into some of the things that are really structural about how the app works and some of the things that are very different about it compared to other social networks. Then we had an episode with Brittany Kellogg, uh, how she got... 1 million followers on TikTok. Great episode. She goes into great detail about the, the specific strategies she uh, did in order to grow her fan base and grow a fan base around her music, which um, is one of those things that is a common question around TikTok. People are growing uh, maybe a presence on TikTok that's totally unrelated to their music, and it just seems more like it's become a diversion and doesn't actually help build uh, their musical career. Um, and then, uh, we had a bonus episode that, uh, will come down the podcast feed, which was from the DIY musician conference with Winborn. Uh, and what was that one called? Chris viral success for niche music. Yes. Great episode. Uh, and I, I love the premise there because so many people think, well, TikTok's just for, uh, teenagers or people that want to just, uh, do pop music or something like that. And uh, they have really found an audience on TikTok doing um, very, you know, uh, acapella, old. Uh, well, how would you describe their what they do? Chris? Yeah, just traditional vocal, vocal music. Um, yeah. All sorts of vocal traditions from around the world. But uh, one thing about that episode is it, it pays a lot of attention to um, TikTok's algorithm and how they kind of made some small tweaks to their videos to drive repeat views, which is one of those big things the algorithm algorithm is paying attention to. So yeah, check that out. Yeah. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about a lot of the trends and things, how to spot them, uh, how to take advantage of them for your music and all that. So all those episodes together should give you like the, 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 a really nice deep dive into TikTok until they change the platform and none of it's relevant yeah, again. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But for now, it's it's all really, really great, uh, great information. So I'm excited about this one because I think with TikTok, trends is such a, a key piece of how the platform works and spotting them and 
and taking advantage of them is, is pretty important. So let's dive in. Where do you want to start? Yeah, well, I was hoping, Rachel, you did an intro to yourself and, and your music, but I'm wondering, uh, having been a digital native all your life, like what was your first experience with TikTok? Did you come from Musical.ly? When did you realize it was like a mega platform for discovery? Yeah, I. Um, so when Musical.ly was really big, I was in college and I was kind of crazy to say out of the out of the young people demographic for that platform uh, is very much Gen Z, you know, folks in like middle school, high school at that time. So I was not on to Musical.ly. I kind of like had a vague idea of what it was, but I wasn't using it. Um, but as far as when I got onto TikTok, I think that was like early 2021, which feels like, again, a decade ago, but um, it's just a little over you know, a year and a half ago. But uh, I got on there because my friends were on there and they were saying like, this is, this is the thing. This is like so entertaining, so fun. And you're going to find yourself just super sucked in. And I kind of, I waited for a long time because I was actually a little concerned about security stuff. I was reading a lot of things about like, ah, oh, there's like weird security stuff with this. And so I was like, I don't know if I want them. But uh, eventually I said, yeah, I want to get on there. I want to try it out. So I did watch a lot of videos was super impressed with how quickly they figured out me as a person and what I like and what I'm interested in because my For You page just so quickly got super curated and I was finding that my sessions, my my time spent on the platform each time was like 15, 20, 30 minutes at a time. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> holy <laughs> that's, moly. That's how they, they, that's got how they me. get you. The hooks yes. were in. Yes. Yeah. And, and I started to see musicians uh, videos because I'm musician myself. I was seeing what people were doing, what they were making. I love folk music. I love alt rock, uh, indie stuff. And people were making such innovative content on TikTok. And so I said, okay, what if I just start making some things and posting them? And so I, I think my first video was like a Nick Drake guitar cover. I was like, yeah, well, uh, people know this, whatever. And a really interesting thing about TikTok is that they'll, for your very first video, give you extra views than like a typical video will come in with. They'll, they'll give you that dopamine hit. They'll oh, say, damn it. Hey. I, I, I blew my one chance to get anyone to care about <laughs> yeah. me on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. My first video, like I had never hadn't used TikTok. I was at the airport and every flight was canceled except one, which I think mine was the one that wasn't canceled. And I just took a picture of that and posted. I had, I just, hadn't done anything and it got like 800 views and i'm like yeah that wasn't that wasn't worth 800 views they clearly <laughs> did that to make me feel right. good about the platform <laughs> absolutely true so i posted that i said wow what um and then just kind of put my feelers out started posting some covers and then what really kind of got my account reaching more people was i'm i'm a music educator like i went to school for music education i teach private lessons and I was like, I love this Phoebe Bridgers song. Would people want to know how to play this Phoebe Bridgers song on guitar? And I, uh, you know, it was post pandemic. I had set up my whole home teaching studio with OBS and was using multiple cameras. And I said, okay, like what if I show the left hand on one camera and the right hand on another one and put them all into one thing and then uh, edit that and then post that on TikTok and show people how to play like a Phoebe Bridgers song. And that just found its audience right away. And so after that, I started posting more of those and uh, was gaining, you know, hundreds of followers at a time. And I was like, wow, what, what is this thing? This is so unlike, you know, Instagram or Twitter or Facebook anymore. You know, you used to get way more reach in those platforms. And now here's TikTok that's maybe grabbing people in with more reach than typical for the other platforms. But, uh, I was, I made friends. I made friends from posting those videos, like people who lived in other parts of the world and, and, you know, out on the East coast and West coast and stuff. And I was like, wow, that's absolutely wild. So that was kind of like the first moment when I realized, yeah, this is something different. I think you, you touched on a lot of things that Jeremy from Windboard said in our conversation. One, that it gets its hooks into you. It finds out yeah. who you are <laughs> yep, as totally. an individual user very quickly. And then it gives you what you want or, you know, maybe what you didn't even know you wanted, but so it keeps people on the platform. Um, you're also talking about instruction and he was saying that it's a really 
powerful place for education and they play up mm -hmm. that from like a musicology history angle, but you're doing like straight up guitar instruction, which is great. Um, I just had a question about like the constraints of, of the format, like how videos mm -hmm. are made, what they look like and how you might, what effect that has on the culture of TikTok. Yeah. So um, if you're watching a YouTube video, obviously like the one that people might be watching now, you've got this uh, horizontal format. When you're on TikTok, for the most part, this isn't always true, but for the most part, you need to think squeeze sides. Everything is stacked on top of each other or all in this vertical view where you want to like use as much screen space as possible and uh, just kind of reframe your thinking uh, regarding what a video should look like, I guess, because now everybody's doing it. Now everybody's got vertical video, YouTube shorts, Instagram, TikTok, of course. So it's it's starting with changing how you think about what a video should look like. Uh, and then, you know, there's there used to be more time constraints on TikTok. That's not really a thing anymore. You can post a video that's up to 10 minutes long because they're competing with YouTube. Uh, but when you're thinking about the general mass audience of people who are watching videos, they probably want a quick hit of something. So something within like 10 to 30 seconds long at, at the most, you can post longer stuff that can work as well, but you have to think, how am I going to get everything in to this time period and make, get my point across? And I'm probably not going to get too deep into something. I'm just going to say one thing. How can I do that in an entertaining, engaging, educational, perhaps, way? Um, I, I also think part of squeezing things into that vertical format kind of brings a, an intimacy to it as well. Like mm -hmm. people's faces are closer up and, you know, like. You're on FaceTime almost. Like, yeah. You're on FaceTime <laughs> with your friend. With like the awkward angle when your mom picks up the phone and it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like, mom, if you hear one thing here. from this episode, please don't shoot up your nose. No that angle is the unless worst. Unless that's your thing. Unless that's your thing. You want people to think that's funny, but maybe not. yeah, if it's intended to be funny, yes. <laughs> Which I know you actually did for CD Baby recently. Sure did. Well yeah. played. Anyway, follow us, follow CD Baby everywhere. Cause if you want to see what I do in my day-to-day -day job, I write funny tweets I make things, I make videos Follow us on TikTok in particular. I'm probably going to say like five more times this video, this uh, this podcast. Yeah, just this add CD Baby on all the places. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, let's, uh, what do we What do we have next, Chris? Um, well, well, so I know this is sort of an impossible question to answer because it's always changing and it's also broad to begin with. But I'm just curious, like what type of content does well if, they're, if you kind of put a category together? Yeah, I have my notes here to answer that specific question. So let's kind of go through. Uh, so the people that, the artists that I've really enjoyed watching and have become a new fan of uh, because of what they're putting on TikTok are, they're doing like original song performances, whether that's from a live show or um, sitting with a guitar in their bedroom. They're just like playing it and being super vulnerable and almost, you know, like a friend on FaceTime sort of thing. Now there are ways to optimize that too. You can uh, give a quick intro and be like, this is a song I wrote about what it feels like to have a crush on somebody. And then you want to do this. And then like this feeling happens and then they go into the song. And so it's super engaging the whole time. So any live performance thing that you can do and optimize, be a musician, be a creative person and do that. Those can do well. Uh, another one is topical cover songs. So say a new Harry Styles or Taylor Swift's uh, album just came out or they're on tour or something like that. People are talking about those songs. They're loving that music. If you can put your own spin, your own perspective on one of those and, and, and put a cover out there, uh, that can do incredibly well. I've seen it so, so many times. Um, so that's another one. And then use like, you know, hashtag cover, something like that. Uh, another one is... Uh, duets so there's this cool function on tiktok called the duet and i think on instagram it's called a remix but it's where you take someone else's video and you have a monitor you know a, an earbud in your ear and you're listening to whatever the sound is of that video 
and then you're recording some additional thing onto it. You know, it's just like a musician in the studio. You're uh, adding a drum track or a guitar solo over something that you're hearing in your ear. And you're recording a video while you're doing that and adding sound to whatever sound is coming from their video. And then you're making a new piece of art from that. Can uh can we pause? I just want to show one. Absolutely. I, well, I want to show one that you made. I didn't know if you <laughs> knew I was going to do this. Oh, I love it. I saw this on your profile. Okay. Here's what she's talking about. Don't make unnecessary journeys. Don't take risks on treacherous roads. And don't swim in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's a, a video of a news broadcaster in Ireland out in a storm they probably shouldn't have been out in because they're telling everyone to not go out into this storm and it's just it's so dramatic it's like there's the visual element there's the audio element of it and i was like what if this had minor key like skyrim type music behind it uh and so that that video did okay yeah it's it, great it was really it's fun so, to make it's so short too here's one more that you uh pulled from uh, as an example <laughs> Here comes the boy. <laughs> Welcome. There he is. Yes. Talk about creativity. Like, like someone was singing to their cat in this video. They're so, they they love this cat so much that they want to sing a song to it, and so they post that on TikTok. It it gets some views and stuff. And then someone who's a pianist is like. I hear a melody in what you're singing and I want to add things to it <laughs> and it's gorgeous. I think that video got like 9 million views or something last year. I, I did another duet with a different video that that uh, original person made too, because they were getting some attention because that sound was attached to their profile. So they made more singing to cat videos and uh -huh. uh, they were super cool and, and tons of people used that sound in their videos because they loved it. It's so satisfying. Well, both of those have a kind of like found sound, accidental feel. Uh, yeah. This next one I want to show real quick is, is I think, way more intentionally a duet. But uh, hey, let me play this. Please duet this. Once upon a midnight jury as I polished off the latest Mike Flanagan series. The new shit was making me weary. So I was looking for a book with some period eeries. If it's Halloween, I'm a festive bitch. I'll read Lovecraft King and the rest of them. But if you're looking for the OG master of baddies, it's Edgar Allan Poe. He's the real granddaddy now. Let's get to the good shit. Turn up the Netflix. It goes on and it's worth watching the whole thing. But I think people get the idea. Yeah, that 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 trend is definitely one that's worth highlighting. Um, because there are other duets. The first ones you you showed were like 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 you kind of characterized Chris almost like found sounds, where you're just uh, putting something to something that already exists out there. <clears throat> but then there's other artists. They're like, hey, I wrote this verse or this beat or this thing. People throw stuff on top of it, and uh, you'll get all sorts of variations um, and interesting results. And sometimes it's just magic that happens. My fear would be I'd say do it this and nobody would do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's another I, I will I'll talk more about this later too, but like but you you don't I think that we need to let go of this cringy fear that things will not work out the way that we want them to. Anytime we put out a song. Oh, I'm always know? aware that they're not going to work out the way I want them to. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kevin, you're, uh, I'm afraid no one will duet this is basically the digital equivalent of playing to the bartender. That's true. That's yeah. So true. We've done that plenty. That's exposure That's therapy. That's, that, That's being true. a social media manager is, is exposure therapy to like, <laughs> man, I work so hard in this and nobody cares. Fine. Move on. Next thing. On. Fine. Yeah. Whatever. Um, I think we had more in the list, right? Yeah. The next so we thing on we had on the list was story time. Tell us about story time. Story time. So if, um, and I won't say that this is necessarily the route for everyone, but if you fancy yourself perhaps an engaging storyteller or you've, uh, or you have something cool to say about something that happened to you, uh, TikTok is really good for that because people are willing to sit through a minute, 30 second, three minute story, uh, no cuts, no nothing of you just talking to the camera and saying, this is this crazy thing that happened to me. And as a musician, you could translate that to here's the story behind this song that I wrote. And, and maybe it's about a relationship or something that happened to you or a big thought that you've had. Uh, 
or you can just tell like a tour story or a show story. Like I don't tell many people this, but I guess I'm going to say it on this podcast, but I played a show to just my partner at a Chick-fil-A one time in college. So (laughs) it was the worst, probably the worst gig that I've ever had. And I could tell that story on TikTok. I don't think I will, but you know, everybody's got the things that have happened in their life and the algorithm favors it because the longer you can keep people on TikTok, they're going to push those videos more. If they notice that people are watching them for a longer period of time, if you can keep people captivated and engaged, tell stories. And you, you had an example. Uh, well, Kevin, did you have something to say? I was just going to say, I too have played a Chick-fil-A. <laughs> wow. Have you really? Yeah. <laughs> the oh, two man. redheads on the podcast that's, played Chick-fil-A. That's right. Ugh. Yeah, I don't go there anymore, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have one example, which is very long. I'll just play maybe 20 seconds of it just to, to show up, uh, what you're talking about. But this, I guess, is playing with a, a meme of uh, Super Freak being in the background. Is that a thing? Yeah, so um, so it's a Nicki Minaj song that uses a sample. You know, that song Super Freak, I think it's from like the 70s. Yeah. Uh, and she did a, a re- remix, reversion of that. And it's a quite... Uh, um crass rap it's very fun but people took a karaoke version of that song and they wrapped their story along to the beat of this song and it just took tiktok by storm a couple months ago and people are still doing it now and they typically started it with one thing about me is that da 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 and they go into the story here it is One thing about me is that when I was yesterday, my aunt invited everyone for Thanksgiving dinner. We said, okay, aunt, let's get on a plane and fly across the country to eat at your house. We spent the night. The very next morning, my aunt makes the bold creative decision on Thanksgiving morning with all of our family there to do this thing called dying. What she died on Thanksgiving morning, we had a body on our hands and then like everyone was grieving. It was kind of uncomfortable, but you know what? That's how it was. We called a nurse in. (laughs) It goes on for like two more minutes. It's the whole story. It's the entire thing. It's gold. (laughs) <laughs> there's a really funny part of that video where he's like she was experiencing rigor mortis <laughs> <laughs> and then it decides that it takes them so long for the ambulance to get there to take the body yeah. away because it's thanksgiving they're like it's our holiday why are you <laughs> calling me to pick up a body how and inconsiderate of you <laughs> now we're just telling the story we should have let him tell it but then they yeah go watch that video they it's have so an ethical quandary of wondering whether they should eat thanksgiving dinner or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's not like there's <laughs> and they do. So, okay, moving from that, the next thing you had is audio visual memes. What yeah, that? so this is this is the big TikTok trend thing, I guess. So you've got sound music, which is an extremely integral part of what TikTok is. Uh, and then you've got whatever editing weird stuff people can do to their videos. So audio memes are, say someone uploads a video where they're maybe telling a story or something happened to them and like something weird, odd, odd, jolly, orally uh, happens. And they're like, it's, it's, it's interesting in some way. So then people use their creativity uh, when they're on TikTok to say, how can I use this sound? What can, what, what can I show that uh, would be a visual thing to go along with this audio and so people are insanely creative and and so it's so interesting to watch uh what people come up with they tell stories and then you know eventually things become ubiquitous in a way for like two days uh where it's an actual meme and so there's a format that people will follow uh that is like lip syncing or uh showing something around their house or their life that like fits along with whatever this audio thing is. So that's that's audio memes. Uh, visual memes happen too, where um, on TikTok, a lot like, you know, Snapchat, uh, Instagram, there are filters that you can put on your face or people around you or um, augmented reality filters where you can like put something like a character in your room with you and like show them and, and have them do something funny or 
again, be creative, but uh, sometimes those are paired with an audio and people just get really used to seeing those things together. And it's that automatic recognizability where it's like, boom, that's a meme. I know what this is. And TikTok will push those because people like them. Here's one that I think fits the audio meme. And Kevin, you should like this. Uh, it pokes fun at Star Wars. How much that thing cost anyway? A couple hundred dollars. dollars. Eight hundred dollars. Yes. You paid eight hundred dollars. Yeah. Did you feel violated? No. <laughs> you should have. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. If for those of you watching the podcast or listening to the podcast, uh, it was somebody who was showing off their Star Wars character stand up, like full size cardboard stand up, and yeah, that. <laughs> So obviously they didn't pay $800 for it, but it's just poking fun of the stupid crap people buy for a serious amount of money. Yeah. And you can add, you know, they added text and they said, this is the exact thing. This is the ex exact thing that I bought. This is the amount I paid for it. So they're, yeah. they're expecting you to read this at the same time. It's like, oh, I yeah. paid 40 bucks for this, but do you still feel violated? <laughs> I do after $40. Yeah. The, so the, go ahead. Uh, I, I was going to say the, those audio memes like that are those are the ones that i see the most on mm -hmm. on tiktok as far as like people jumping on trends it's like all at least my feed that's uh, the majority of what i'm seeing that's not original content or the other stuff we're talking about like duets or people playing songs or whatever but mm -hmm. that seems to be uh something that using popular audio definitely seems to be a trend that um really works there's this one I want to bring up um, that I think was really big in the late summer, or early fall or something like that. And it has a CD baby story. So can you tell us what the hell is taste the biscuit? Oh my gosh. That's a whole, I can't get too much into this cause it's, there's lore, there's lore behind this, but uh, there's this straight to YouTube movie. I think it's called like chickens in the closet. Uh, and it's by this guy, Vincent Gargiolo. I don't, not sure if that's how you say it, but he's the director. It's a very like absurdist, weird movie. And you have to have kind of a very specific humor, like, like me to uh, find this funny. But uh, there's a song in that movie called Taste the Biscuit by Toasters and Moose. And Toasters is one person, Moose is the other person. They're a duo and one plays piano and, and, and one uh, she sings and she's, she's very, very funny. She also acts in the movie. But uh, the director wrote this song. They performed it in the movie. And then he released it in uh, 2015, I think, to Spotify and uh, released it through CD Baby. I think it you know, sat for a while. Nothing really happened with it because, you know, people weren't super excited about this song, I don't think. Uh, I think it was on George Lopez at one point. But it's, I, I think that was maybe before they released it to Spotify. So there was some interest in there. But uh I think this was like early fall that people started using this song and paired it with this lady walking on the, this, this um, filter of this lady walking on the beach and she's chrome like an alien and she's wearing this purple dress and she's walking. And then your face, you, the person using the filter, your face gets put on her head and you can lip sync along and say, taste the biscuit, taste the goodness of the biscuit. It's so weird. It's so weird, but also so wonderful. <laughs> and from there, it moved to people using other weird filters with the song. So there's one that you're like another robot and you're walking through this like tunnel and it's so strange. And then there's another one where you're like uh, a, a, an octopus and your head is on the octopus's head and then your head is also on every the end of every tentacle and it's moving around. It's like, taste the biscuit. It's so strange, but people loved it. And I loved it. <laughs> it was awesome. And that's a CD Baby release, you know? Well, here it is. Taste the biscuit. Taste the goodness of the biscuit. Taste the honey sauce. Taste the goodness of the biscuit with the honey sauce. There's another verse where they talk about fried chicken and like mac and cheese. And don't get your honey sauce on me. I don't like the way it the way it mixes with my mac and cheese. Same, <laughs> same. Um, well, I, I don't know how you top taste the biscuit, but we have a lot more to discuss. Uh, yeah. I know it's at some point we're gonna uh, do something cool where you recommend five TikTok creators musicians should follow for inspiration, but. 
I just had like a quick question about early on in TikTok. It was like known for like the dance challenges and various kinds of challenges. Like, is that a thing of the past or does that still happen? Um, it depends on what side of TikTok you're on. I don't know if I'm on the side of TikTok where that still happens, but I do know that companies from what I read in my literature about uh, marketing and stuff, like people will still activate campaigns where it's like a hashtag campaign or like a, some kind of challenge campaign. Maybe that's because the advertising agency is maybe a little behind the times, but people still use them. They spend lots of money on it and they still get results uh, mm. from those things. I don't think it's as ubiquitous as it used to be, though. Can we like, can we can we stop dance. and point out something that I've only ever heard people say in reference to TikTok? And you just said it, Rachel. I've heard other people say this. I'm not on that side of TikTok. <laughs> Like, I've never heard anyone say, I'm not on that side of YouTube or that side of Instagram. Uh, what to me it means is that the algorithm doesn't show me that stuff. <laughs> no, so they know I've they done. know that I see, like, I think they see that I, like, see right through it or, like, I that's just not something that's going to in interest me or entertain me. And they say, wow, Rachel always scrolls past this. I'm not going to show her this stuff again. But, but what's funny to me is because it's, it's, uh, I had heard, I was looking for some, uh, like an official news story, but I, I had heard just like last week or the week before that TikTok has surpassed YouTube as the number one search uh, video platform for search. But uh, I have not seen any broader official stories on that. But anyway, that being said, it's funny to me because when you think about YouTube, it, you feel like, oh, I've got access to everything. And there are algorithms driving it, everything. But TikTok is the one where I hear people specifically say like, Oh, that's because you're not on that side of TikTok. And I'm like, what, what the heck does that even mean? <laughs> yeah. If I had to, just, like, it's almost your personality. It's like, if I'm on a side of TikTok, it's the musician side, it's the, they're local. They, they know your location, fun fact, but um, the uh, Minnesota they know where, side. They know far more. They know where you're sitting right now, yeah, Rachel. Oh, they know what direction you're facing. Oh, man. They know, <laughs> they know it all. Trust me. I'm on, I'm on Minnesota. I'm on, uh, LGBTQ, I'm on uh, science, I'm on musical theater, you know, there's definitely buckets of types of content that they serve up to me. And that's like the side of TikTok that I'm on. One thing that like I got into very early in my TikTok usage, which I still see a lot of. So clearly this is still a thing is those like comedy sketches or skits where the same person plays two or three characters and cut back and forth. Like that seems to be an undying trend uh, at yeah, least that's in, in my corner of TikTok. Yeah, well, and that's probably why I wanted to highlight it because we've uh, we've talked about some trends, uh, and and when you and and Chris's question about like is this still a thing, and then Rachel, you saying I'm not on that side of TikTok. I've had that same conversation with uh, another artist friend of mine recently, uh, related to the you know the content they see and all that, and and trying to pick up on trends. So it's like. How do you find out the trends that are working when uh, I know just by observation, but trends start somewhere? It's like for if I look at TikTok, some of the things I still see were trends. That I'm like, OK, this I thought died two years ago, mm -hmm. but I'm still seeing it. Is it still a thing? Is it not a thing? Is it dead? How do you know if it's still a thing? Clearly, TikTok's still serving up some of those older trends. But I guess that's the question. Probably a lot of people are thinking like, well, how do I find out what trends are are happening and how do I not just waste all my time trying to find trends and now I just found a new thing to distract me from doing music? <laughs> yeah, I, so a blanket statement I will say about that is that you should, I think, let content wash over you and then if you get inspired, then jump on something. Don't force, because uh, it will be not good if you're forcing it if you're trying to like just insert yourself into something that you, doesn't really work for your brand or that you don't feel like oh i'm excited to make this um you shouldn't do it i don't think but so let things wash over you and see what ideas come to you how can i participate in this okay cool i i have an idea if you don't if it doesn't feel good don't do it but um in terms of like knowing what's trending and keeping track of those things um, yeah, there was a recent algorithm shift where I've noticed, because I spent way too much time on TikTok, I've noticed that people are 
or the algorithm is serving up videos from weeks ago uh, because they've figured out because of the content buckets and stuff like that, that I will probably sit through this video, even if it's an older video um, because they know me. But uh, if you're specifically looking to jump on trends, um, advice I would give is go follow some like influencers and see what sounds they're using yesterday uh, and keep track of those things. But then also another tip is like, if you see a video that comes up on your for you page and, and you like the sound and you want to see if it's trending, you click into that sound in the bottom right corner, tap into it, the little record player uh, icon, and you can go see when was the first video made that used this sound. If it's within like a couple weeks or so, cool, that might be trending. If you check back on it, don't want to give people too much work, but if you check back and see every couple of hours, like, oh, this is going up, the, the number of videos that are using this sound is going up every hour. And it's yeah. like, you know, 10,000, 20,000. And if you know in your heart, like, ooh, I think people can use this in a lot of ways, that's probably a good one to jump on because uh, it's going to probably reach a lot of people soon. But probably don't go use a trend that has been, you know, from March, yeah, mon months and months ago, because probably people are past that by now. That gets to uh, something I was going to ask you about later, but I guess we could just do it now is like, how intentional are you in your TikTok usage as either a user or a creator or both? Like, are you going on there a certain amount of time a day, sort of trying to source content and inspiration for your own stuff? Or are you simply there binging stuff? And like you said, like inspiration strikes. I'm just wondering what the balance is and yeah, how deliberate you are. I'm not a model for a healthy balance on TikTok. <laughs> at all. <laughs> uh, I, like I was saying, I think my average session time, you know, how they track how long you spend on each app. I, it's probably for TikTok around 15, 20 minutes. Um, so I, I am an over user. I'm a power user. 20 minutes a ways, day. Oh no. Per no when she opens it. Oh, at a time. If I can, oh, if I, I can, <laughs> no, if I can I was put like a, think that was so healthy, 20 minutes, that's reasonable. Oh my God. No, for a whole day, it's, probably closer to like a couple hours, I would say. Um, you can do like the screen report on your phone and you can go and actually see how much time you spend on each app. But uh, yeah, fully addicted. In some ways, TikTok has replaced TV for me because again, it knows me so well. I don't do any work. I don't have to go find a show that I think I'll be interested in. It just gives it to me. The whole time. <laughs> it's digital crack. Uh, <laughs> but and uh, if I were a healthier TikTok user, I would probably try to spend an hour max or less each day or maybe you know four hours a week something like that that sounds like a lot but maybe maybe less depending on a person's balance um but for finding trends and keeping track of stuff uh there's a really good function where you can um bookmark a video you can favorite it i think it's called favorite and then you can organize your favorites into collections and so I have collections for, I like this sound. So I have one called just like sounds and I have another one called like visual memes. So like uh, anything I want to maybe recreate visually, I can put that into that bucket. Um, and then I have another one with hundreds of videos just for recipes because I love cooking and, and I see tons of cooking videos on TikTok too. Uh, so that's how I, if I have my analytical brain cap on when I'm watching TikTok, that's how I save things and say, okay, I want to like look at this for later. Uh, but most of the time, yeah, I'm just a zombie. Assuming. <laughs> <laughs> when, it, when it comes to trends, uh, do using particular hashtags related to those trends help hurt or they are... I've, I've heard um, various reports about the benefit of hashtags on TikTok. Yeah, so I'm very black and white with hashtag usage. usage. If you're um, trying to get more discoverability by using a particular trending hashtag, uh, I don't think that that works. Uh, people will put completely unrelated hashtags onto their videos like about a Marvel movie or something like that, or like hashtag FYP, hashtag for you page. What do you think that's yeah. going to do? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, so when we think about SEO as marketers, if we're thinking about how TikTok is 
becoming more of a search engine sort of thing, which that definitely true. Um, use hashtags related to the content that you're putting out because if someone wants to go find a tutorial about how to play a song or if they want to go find content about sync licensing, stuff like that, that's a function in the search part of TikTok that you can search for particular hashtags. So I don't know. I, I've never had success trying to, I think I maybe did it once where I tried to like use a particular hashtag to try and get more views. I don't, I just don't think that by the functionality that it works. Same thing on Instagram. Yeah, I would, I would tend to agree from my experience and some of the experience I've seen from other artists. However, I find it confusing when I look at my for you feed and they are using all those hashtag FYP. Mm -hmm. FYP hashtag yeah. Free. yeah. And it's like, well, all of them, the ones I'm seeing are using those hashtags, mm -hmm. but but that may not be why the content spread. That's, I think, why. I think one thing that that to me is very clear with TikTok, um, more so than any other platform to date, is how much what you say is being, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're getting the um, the words and, and creating the, the closed captioning automatically. Yeah. And a lot of what they're doing is keying off the words that you say. Yeah, it's and that's keyword optimization, that exactly. That's something that we haven't experienced to this degree on social platforms before. Reels has that built in some, I think, but not to the same degree that that TikTok clearly does. Yeah, I think uh, like so many things, Reels has just sort of copied TikTok uh, yeah. for how they're setting things up. And so <laughs> TikTok for, forever has had uh, auto captions. And, and whether you turn them on or not, I think they're probably listening to your oh audio. they're listening well, yes yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's no question yeah. no question uh yes i had an example of that recently with a friend of mine having a video get a million views no hashtags no description just uh based off the words that were said it's content first that's that's my always my mindset think about the video itself first if your video is not good your caption and your hashtags are not going to save it or make it uh, do well and good is very subjective on tiktok <laughs> that's yeah. why there's all those sides of tiktok <laughs> all those neighborhoods well it's, um, i was you gave us some good sort of general tips about when you find content how to how to save it for later reference but also just following good artists and good creators uh you've talked about do you want to recommend some people that every musician should follow Absolutely. Yes. I think, Chris, you asked me for five. I gave you a couple bonus ones because I couldn't keep it to a list of five. Uh, so the first one I want to recommend is John Mark Nelson. Um, he built his following through doing duet prompts. So saying literally duet this, duet this uh, sound, this video that I'm creating because he's really good at production. He makes just like really funky kind of beats that people can do all kinds of things with. They can rap over it. They can sing over it. They can add um, additional things to them. So that's kind of how he started his following. So if you want to like be that kind of artist and say, okay, I want to get people to interact with my music and maybe find a potential collaborator uh, for a future track. Um, he's a great one to follow. He also, he makes, of course, makes his own music and releases it. He has different types of videos promoting his music that you can kind of, probably kind of copy the style of if you want to just like steal his ideas. Um, Chris, are you going to give examples for each of these? Yeah. And I won't play all of them, but I was going to start okay. with one that's just his sort of raw music. Hey, duet this invitation. And sure. then I'll just immediately follow it up with one where other people have joined in uh, and added stuff on top. Please do at this. I built a tiny hot air balloon and put a roly-poly in the basket. The roly-poly bully said, thank you, homie, time to roll, so let's get the match lit. There were tears in my eyes as the roly-poly slowly floated up to the sky. He waved a little handkerchief while he was thanking me. See you in one year's time. Yeah, so that second one was an original video by him. Other people added more things to it, and then he did it 
like a quadruple duet where he added yet yet another thing to go on kept, top of it. Kept growing. Yep, exactly. So beautiful. I love creativity. I love music. I love what people make. So cool. Yeah. Um, so that's that? John Mark oh. Nelson. Yeah. So my next person I want to talk about is um, admittedly a friend of mine, but also they've had just so much success on TikTok and it's been really cool to watch. So uh, his name is Sammy Copley. Uh, he's based in Dublin. And uh, I think this is a great example of an artist that has had some very popular videos, but the majority of their following and like the um, loyalty of fans has been built by consistent posting, just like lots and lots of cover songs, lots of, hey, I just like came up with this song idea. What do you think sort of things? And that there's so much value. I think we look at numbers all the time and we look at like total follower account. We look at Spotify streams, things like that. But the value, the real heart stuff is the people who have their, your super fans. And so Sammy through his videos has created me among them. So many uh, super fans and uh, has had a video. I think Chris, you can play this one soon, but it's one that he just posted and was like, yeah, this is a song that I have. And that wasn't released anywhere yet it went fairly viral, very popular. And then he released it and that translated to a million Spotify streams. Yeah. I'll play two quick ones and I'll probably cut them off because they're long, but uh, both sure. worth watching in their entirety. Here they go. A few years ago, I wrote this song about a fictional old married couple from the point of view of the husband to the wife who has been trying to write a song for her their entire marriage. I love you to the bone. I love every piece of you All the pieces you don't That face you pull for strangers The voice you assume on the phone This is a song about what it's like to have a crush on someone when you have the energy of a very small, very nervous dog. I wish I loved as well as I could write I wish I wrote the things I truly knew I wish I was the sum of my goodbyes I wish I knew what to do with in between I think what I like about this example so much for, for this podcast in particular is it's just songwriting. It's like this person mm -hmm. isn't being TikTok-y. I mean, besides no. <laughs> besides no. adding captions and talking about what the song is about, but it's just very vulnerable. I'm obsessed with Sammy, just like pure talent. And and also uh, Sammy has duetted with some of my videos and posted them on uh, his channel too. And, and it's been so cool. Just an incredible person. And no one is more, in my opinion, more deserving than uh, just blowing up and, and it's starting to happen for him. So very cool. So uh, you said it's translated into Spotify streams with this. Yeah. This was one example. Of these. What what are those things that that you've seen that that they uh, use to, to translate, like to really make it move to Spotify off of TikTok? Because most of these platforms, that's the last thing they want. So the challenge is yeah. like, how do I get this this activity somewhere else? Yeah, it's um, it's a very, I think, very specific kind of strategy that people have to, I think, let go of their ego a little bit because TikTok, every video is a new at bat to potentially meet, uh, reach new people. So Sammy had that first video do super well. I think it got like 200,000 likes or something like that. And people were obsessed with it. They were using the sound in their own videos. They were really excited about it. And so... Um, I'm not sure if this is around the time that Sammy signed with Tin Pot Records, um, but it's a artist focused label where, mm -hmm. you know, their whole thing is like, we don't do bad deals. We keep the artists in, in the center. So I think there was maybe some uh, strategizing in that label where uh, lots and lots of videos following that viral one uh, were made to say the song comes out this day. Here it is. Here's another performance of the song. Here's me using the sound to talk about it again. Because a big risk, Chris, and we have this in our notes, is like, you don't want your video to go super popular and then people are thinking about it and they have it in their brain, but then they can't find you again. 
that's the that's the big thing. You don't you don't want it to go away. So uh, hopefully, if you keep using the same sound, because videos are attached to each other by sound, you use the same sound again, you might reach those same people again, or they've followed you, which is again amazing. Um, you want to just keep re-engaging and making more content around that thing that you're pushing. I, I think Sammy probably made 20, 25 videos. Maybe that's, maybe that's pushing it, but it was a lot. It was a lot of videos specifically around that release, using that sound, performing that song again. And uh, people were super excited about it. When you say using that sound, <clears throat> so the, we just saw a video that are a couple of videos that had performances. So using that same sound off that video, but a different video where that the audio is from the previous recording, correct? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Just exactly. Trying to make sure people understand what the, the, the yeah, I know it's kind of hard when we're not like in the app together talking about this. <laughs> but yeah. You can go into a sound from a previous video that you've made and you can tap the button that says use this sound and then make another video. It's like a chain reaction, like a Twitter thread or social media manager talking here. You add things together. Yeah. Wait, I, I'm just laughing at the thing you said about the label. We don't do bad deals. That's what they all say. <laughs> That's I what know, they right? all say. Save that. We've got our scam segment coming up. Don't worry about that. We've got I know. I know. Look up Tim Pot. If any if any of if any label I would ever say is not is not lying when they say that it, it seems like Tin Pot's the real deal. So um, is there anything else to point out about Sammy's content or strategy before I don't think so. I think we're ready to go on to the next person. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Adana Duru, I think I'm saying that correctly. Uh, Adana Duru is an incredible R&B vocalist. Uh, she has made, she also has an incredible sense of humor and has really played that into her videos. And so she, I think the ones that I know her most from and she's had lots of different kinds of videos go like actually truly, truly viral. Um, the ones I know the most are the ones where she uh, puts text in the screen and, and, screen and says, uh, music in white clubs be like and then she does like a reenactment of what you'd hear over the speakers at a white club and so it starts like some great music you know like universally very likable and then there's like a transition and it goes into like panic at the disco or something there's some some uh, music that people would probably associate more with white yeah. people <laughs> I'll, I'll show that one while you're describing it here it is it's going down i'm yelling to you better move <laughs> so good so good uh so adana's got those videos uh she also has somewhere there's another kind of trend on TikTok where you put like a series of emojis at the top of a video and you sing something in the style of whatever emoji that would be in order. I don't think I have an example for this one, but like, there's like the cowboy, the old man, the melting person, the, uh, I don't know, flamingo, stuff like that. And you're, it's your interpretation of the same sentence in a song by how these different emoji people would sing them. And so she's got some great ones uh, in that style too, but uh, she's got great music out that she promotes. Um, I think I, you just have to go check out her profile and see exactly how she, she does those, but she's leveraged this following that she's gotten from these other videos to translate into actual streams for her music and, and attention around her original music. This other example, it's not exactly what you're talking about with the emojis, but it's still sort of following a visual prompt like that. So let me play mm -hmm. it, or just, I'll play like five seconds of it real quick. I'd apologize when we fuck up the night. Fuck up the night. We can fuck up the night. <laughs> those are just described to people who are just listening, but uh, it's a, it's one of those effects where uh, this one it's it's audio too, so the effect will listen to your microphone and make the little fish go up or down based on the pitch of your voice. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Very good. I think all that's right, all I've got next? for Adana. Yeah, uh, uh, the Pocket Queen. The Pocket Queen, if you're a percussionist, if you like funky music, uh, PQ, she's, if you're someone who you're like, okay, I have um, some kind of really good technical skill on my instrument, 
and maybe I have some like video production skills. Uh, if you go to PQ's account, there's it's just a total masterclass in how you can make an engaging short form video and uh, just show off your skills and be like, yo, this is what I do. I'm so confident in this. And, and she just slays so good. Here's those drum chops. in another life i was a drummer <laughs> but i'm not i'm so bad i still, <laughs> no, wa I still want to be <laughs> yeah yeah she, she, she's great she had like that slow zoom thing going it's like you've got the sound you've got the visual element and then it's like it's just always moving it's that's just like a built-in tiktok effect yeah angie powers is next tell us about angie powers angie powers i think i first discovered angie powers uh covering a phoebe bridgers song and I think Angie Powers is a great example of how TikTok is not just for Gen Z. You can be any age uh, and find success on TikTok because I, I don't I don't know how old she is. It's not polite to ask, obviously, but you know she's she's not you know in her forties. She's she's older, but she covers contemporary songs like Taylor Swift songs, Phoebe Bridgers songs, Harry Styles, and she takes requests. And so she's, it's this really cool thing of this is an older person who is covering this new song sung by a very young artist. And so like the stands, the super fans of those artists love it because they're like, wow, look at, look at this person uh, who is older getting excited about this young people, quote unquote, uh, music. And so her music is a big part of her account. She also does just sort of explaining like, showing things in her life and like giving life advice and things like that as, as a, as a uh, sage person might do. And so I think she's got like a million followers by now. And yeah. I'll, I'll show an example of both of those things. And just real quick. I was thinking about who you are, your delicate point of view. I was thinking about you. I'm not worried about where you who you will go home to I'm just thinking about you I asked the guy in the deli if he could give me a sample of one of these one of these potato wedges I thought he'd give me a little tiny sliver you know look at this this is a sample he hooked me <laughs> That's funny. it goes on there's more but <laughs> Yeah, she's great. I love her. P many people adore her. She does little tutorial videos too. If people, if people ask, like, how'd you play that Harry Styles song, or whatever, she'll just show mm. you because she is gracious enough to do that. Cool. Let's talk about Raina Del Cid. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Raina Del Cid is a YouTube. I think YouTube first artist. They they gained a lot of their uh, following on YouTube first, but uh, translated their amazing skill and lyricism and uh guitar technical abilities straight to tiktok figured it out got a pretty decent following and um yeah i think there's some really good examples on their account of how to promote your music this one is uh they're in roswell new mexico i think and they're in front of a water tower that says roswell so that provides the ufo yeah. con context here we go <laughs> In the first week of July There was lightning in the desert And explosions in the sky An unknown flying object Came a crash into the earth And a cattleman named Brazzle Found the wreckage in the dirt My country tis of the land of inequity Of the I sing Land where my mothers cried, fought, bled, and sacrificed for rights which we are now denied. Let freedom ring. Yeah, I think that that last Jokey one was and serious. 
Yeah, right, those are like, two different. Those are two different videos for people listening <laughs> yeah, on the yeah, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> that was like that was a weird transition in the middle of that song. <laughs> yeah, that second one was in response to the Roe v. Wade decision uh, earlier this year, and just a rewriting of classic American song to make a statement. I think that's I think that's their most uh, viral video they've had. Um, Seven hundred thousand likes, something like that, and it did crazy on Instagram too. But yeah, that first one they got—they were on tour. They got stranded in Roswell, and so they're like, "Well, why don't we, why don't we write a song?" They said it. they were there for ten days. That sounds miserable. Yeah, in their van. Oh, it was three days. Thing. Three days would be a humorous adventure. Ten days, it's like, all right, my <laughs> life needs to move on. This is this yeah. is. Big. Well, I like Real. both of those videos, sort of back to back, in a way to show, like, on the one hand, that first one was jokey a little bit, but also sort of more high high produced. It was a mic. They they'd clearly set it up to be shot in a particular way, and then the second one was way more vulnerable. It's just singing into their earbuds, essentially. Mm-hmm. Felt more TikToky in a way, but yeah. then it, through that vulnerability, the seriousness of the content is almost enhanced. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Just anybody can make that video. Well, mm-hmm. the production side of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's next? Uh, looks like we've got. Uh, my final example, which is the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife, not a musician, obviously, but uh, when you're a social media manager and you're in the social media world, you're always looking for inspiration of um, accounts that might be, quote unquote, more boring, but do it really well. And this is an example of, of that. They, uh, their Twitter is incredible. Their TikTok is great. They just, if you're looking for somewhere to find people using trends and what, how you could try out a, a trend that's doing really well. This is an account to go check out because they're super on the pulse um, about trends. Yeah. And the star Wars example about the purchase and being ripped off earlier was them. So we'll just do this one other example we have here. Tell me it's not the end of life. I never meant to break your heart. <laughs> Which for listeners at home is just someone lying on the floor with antlers on pretending to be roadkill. And then they slowly get dragged off, <laughs> off screen so funny. as they make eye contact. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, those are really good examples. Thanks. Um, I know we we're probably running a little short on time, so maybe we can just rush through a little bit of the, the last section. Did you have anything you wanted to hit Kevin about those? Uh, no, I think, yeah, we just need to hit this last section because we do have calls or we have emails to get, get to. So, yeah, I'm, I, we hit a lot of this stuff, but the, my two remaining questions are like, what's the right balance for an artist who wants to write original stuff and present their original music versus jumping on a trend or a meme, um, uh, versus even something like, Hey everyone, I've got a song on Spotify. Please do this thing. You know, like, how do you balance mm-hmm. all that? Yeah. So the first thing I want to say is that if you go 100% in on trends, you are not going to build a loyal following. There's just no way that's going to happen because trends by nature, because you're kind of just being part of the art in your body or or how how you're presenting yourself, you're not really showing yourself necessarily. You are just participating in a thing that people are talking about in that moment. We've talked about this Uh, you guys have on the podcast and the blog, you don't want to chase trends. Again, let it wash over you. If you get inspired by something, go make something. Um, But TikTok themselves have taken like the TikTok um, courses that they've had out right now for like businesses and stuff. They say one third trends, one third original content, and one third just community engagement. So going out and being a participator in TikTok and, and commenting and uh, responding to comments on your videos, things like that. So definitely don't, you're, you're not going to build a big following on just doing trends, things like that. But another pillar to remember is every video is a new at bat, every single one, uh, your followers, maybe they might remember, Oh, they've done this multiple times, but I think there's less, um, friction on TikTok and less, um, annoyance to people like talking about the same thing multiple times. So, cause we, cause we know that you're putting out something new with the potential to reach brand new people every single time. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very important point. I just had a meeting with folks at TikTok a couple weeks ago up in Canada, the Canadian TikTok crew, and they said that exact same thing that, um, 
every video is a chance for a new audience. And so you should not be creating uh, with the mindset of like, everyone already knows that I did this because mm -hmm. they most likely don't. Um, and that was one of the big pieces of advice they gave that if you have a video hit that you should keep, <clears throat> you should keep going as if you're continuing to reach a new audience and they're just un finding you or that they like seeing what you're doing over and over again. So, right. Yeah. Very yeah, different really like from it. YouTube. Like YouTube would tell you the exact opposite when using mm. their platform. Like that would not be a practice that would work well on YouTube. Um, this may be a very broad thing to ask as we close this section out, but like, what would be your advice tips for people who are feel new to TikTok? Um, not necessarily as users, but for as creators or artists and then anything they should be aware of, like what are the risks? Yeah. Can, can you combine all that into a closing? Yeah, I'll try to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay. No so say you're, say you're someone who is interested, you're TikTok curious. You want to go try it out um, and see what could happen for you, I suppose. Uh, my first tip would be have an incubation period. Go and just consume a bunch of content, be a content consumer, get used to what happens here. What are people doing? It's different than anywhere else. I guess it's kind of like Instagram reels now because they copied them, but it's still even, I think even still separate from Instagram uh, reels. So go get familiar with what are people doing? What's the style with this kind of content creation? Um, so have that incubation period. Uh, and then once you start making stuff, don't be surprised or discouraged if things don't do super well, because if your goal is to try and gain a following on TikTok, you're, you're just, you're just going to have videos that don't do well. It's just kind of the nature of, of how it works. What you can't do is put all of your stake and stock again, social media manager, exposure therapy, don't put everything into one piece of content because it's just, you're going to go wild. You're going to go crazy if you're, if you're thinking that way. Uh, and then my final piece of advice would be to go and engage and actually make friends. Like I've, I, something that the gurus and the people who talk about TikTok don't talk enough about, I don't think is the potential for making really solid musician people like you connections on TikTok. Uh, like Sammy is a friend of mine purely because of TikTok. I have friends all over the country that just have similar interests to me that me as a digital native, I love making friends online. I wouldn't have met them otherwise. So go and engage in the comments, go comment on people's videos, go be a part of the community and make friends. If you want to dive fully that deep into it, definitely don't do that if it's not something that you want to do. But um, that's how I think I've found the success that I have is just being a participator. One, one thing that uh, <clears throat> we haven't talked about much on this episode, but concerning trends, uh, I have seen artists that, like you're saying, don't just be about the trends that have like really just leaned into certain things, even trying to make it about their music and just being surprised at how little traction it's gotten them. Uh, so it can be somewhat puzzling. Uh, and I'm like, we won't embarrass anyone on this show and bring up their account and analyze it. But there's a particular artist I follow that's in my mind that I'm like, they're trying everything, like all the, the gimmicks and they get eight views, nine views. It's like, Oof. it's like, Hey, I'm, you don't say that about me. <laughs> That's Chris. <laughs> Chris, I'm waiting for you to actually become TikTok famous because there's You're no actually, excuse. Waiting for me to actually you. try. Yeah. I'm oh, waiting man. for you to try. But so, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's interesting to me that to see that and go, wow. Uh, if you're just about the, trying to, you know, hijack the trends, it may backfire for you. Um, so that's a, a something to be aware of. Yeah, I have a just a couple more things to say. And it's that the the, the part of views are down right now, just in general, uh, for two reasons. Uh, algorithm changed recently quite a bit. And then another thing is that TikTok has become so ubiquitous now that there are tons and tons of people on there making tons of content. So it's less easy to have a video do super well now than it was even six months ago, a year ago. 
Uh, and then regarding risks, uh, we don't know what's going on in China. <laughs> we, yeah. don't know, yeah. we don't know yes. what's going on with ByteDance and stuff. I know that uh, I read recently the, the FBI, I guess, has like an open investigation against TikTok and the uh, things that it, they're saving about us, our personal information and how those might be used potentially. So I don't know a ton about that. I love TikTok. I love being on there. Um, but I think everyone should, if they're going to do their due diligence, maybe go read a little bit about what's yeah. going on. Yeah, I think that's uh, a good thing to to mention for a couple of reasons. One, social networks come and go. And mm -hmm. TikTok is obviously uh, connecting with the culture right now. Someday it won't be. So if you're building an audience there, you should always have in the back of your mind, like, how am I getting this audience to a place where I own them? Totally. Because uh, you you don't own them on TikTok. Um, and that's true with any social platform. But also the other thing that you just mentioned is that these platforms are always evolving. And what happened, especially with the the the, the kind of growth trajectory and the the timeline of TikTok, it's been in this space where things might have been potentially easier because people were still adopting the platform, new like new sides of TikTok are opening up yeah. <laughs> to use the term new, you know, things that weren't there a year ago are now there. But that also changes how the platform starts reacting and how much content it has to push. And so your your mileage may vary and things will change over time. So just something to be aware of. Well, before we do the uh, listener calls and email section, I asked Rachel to share the proudest video you have or the, the video you're proudest of. Uh, mm -hmm. so I don't know if you want to say anything about this. I, I think it's cool simply <laughs> because I knew you as a great guitar player from your content, but also you play other things. Yeah, I'll give a brief description, but um, I went to school for music education and my main instrument was the trumpet and I still play trumpet in the bands that I play in and a community band uh, here in Minnesota love playing the trumpet. And um, also I love um, Phoebe Bridgers and there's a song of hers called Kyoto, where this is very awesome trumpet line. And I don't know, it was like a year and a half ago, I just had this idea to go play this trumpet line out in the park by my apartment and record it. And that was like squarely in the middle of fall, the leaves are beautiful. I went and made that video and posted it, it did pretty well. And then I was like, you know, what if I went back every season and did this and, and made multiple pieces of content around the same thing. So I waited each season for a day that had like the iconic Minnesota, whatever season it was. So the, <laughs> the frozen, the frozen trees, uh, the leaves budding and then like the summer sweltering heat. And then I just I posted each of those individually each season and then I added them together and was like, I played this song each season for a year long out in the park by my house and then that one that was the compilation of all of them did the best out of all of them because it had lots of visual interest uh and showed commitment i guess <laughs> i'm just obsessive <laughs> i suppose yeah. well here it is Short and sweet. Short and sweet. Yeah. Simple. <laughs> well, thanks so much for bringing your wisdom and content. Yeah. Thank podcast. you. Thank you guys again for having me. Uh, this is super, super fun. And yeah, again, never, never dreamed I would be here. Incredible. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to stick around for the listeners? Yeah, you can, you can, we got a couple. Yeah. Sp yeah. 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 Yeah, Might as well, sure. Before, well, before we're gonna we're gonna jump into some listener, um, we got got a couple emails, a couple scam emails, and a regular email. Before we do that, uh, Rachel, where where can people follow you? Check you out. Uh, what are the best spots? Yeah, if you just search my name, um, I'm I'm primarily on uh, Instagram, face not 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 Facebook. Sorry, uh, <laughs> uh, Instagram, Twitter. And TikTok. And if you just search my name, it's E L, not A E L. And then Bear, B E A R I N G E R, Behringer, like a bear is attacking you. Um, that's where you can you can find me. 
Cool. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you for being here. And uh, yeah, and of course, you can also see Rachel often on the CD Baby socials. So if you're not following at CD Baby, you should in all the places. Yeah, follow us on TikTok. I didn't say that enough times. Follow us on TikTok. Yeah, we're, we're still building that up. The So CD Baby on TikTok. Mm -hmm. uh, and all right, well, let's get into some listener calls and questions. And as a reminder, if you've got uh, something that you want to share for, on the show, if you've got a TikTok trend that's working, something you've tried or how you're tapping into some of the things that are happening on the platform, we'd love to hear about it. You can call our listener line at 360-524-2209, or you can email us at podcast at cdbabypodcast.com. I would, we need more TikTok stories. We, we haven't heard uh, that many from our audience, not in a while at least. And we've got a lot of TikTok content out there. And I know people are jumping on the platform. It was funny. Uh, I, I mentioned that I met some people from TikTok uh, that, that worked in the Canadian office uh, when I was in Montreal uh, last month. And they did a session about TikTok at a music conference and uh, asked how many people here are on TikTok. And there was a room of artists. And um, most of them hadn't been on TikTok yet. I, mm. That kind of blew me away. And she's like, oh, oh my whole presentation is going to have to <laughs> shift <laughs> from being about, you know, it was, I think she had it geared more towards being a power user and it ended up being more about like, here's how you get started on TikTok kind of thing. Canadians so, kind are of either extremely healthy or just way behind <laughs> the times <laughs> or both. It could be both. Uh, yeah. So it, it was just kind of surprising. Like, I'm mean, wow, uh, that, because we we kind of experienced that some to some degree when we're talking to artists, and I'm like, I thought everybody was already on TikTok. So yeah, if you're just getting on TikTok and and trying some things out, we'd love to hear about it as well. So you've got the info to call in for the show or email in, and we'd love to hear about it. So let's start with um, we've got okay, we've got let's start with our question. Here we go. Hi, CD Baby. I'm a 23-year-old singer-songwriter from South Africa. I recently discovered your podcast and have been listening to it for inspiration on my morning walks. And oh my goodness, I'm hooked. I'm working on a country EP for release next year, and I'm just gathering wisdom from your podcast to make the release as amazing as possible. I do have a question for you. I am a songwriter first, and I write much more than I'm able to release myself. I really want to distribute my music to other artists so that I can get more of it out there and also have it be passive income for me. Everyone always has vague, vague advice, but do you have any practical advice steps for me? Do I need to cut a deal with a publisher? And if so, who do I approach and how? I've worked with several hugely successful international songwriters in the past year who have all validated the standard of my songwriting, so I can assure you I'm not just an overly confident amateur and won't be wasting anyone's time. <laughs> I just don't know what the next practical step is to writing for other people or getting songs cut. Any and all advice would be deeply appreciated. All the best. Uh, Melindy Burden. Uh, that's an interesting question. We've, uh, we, haven't, we haven't had one like that in a while, at least that I can remember. Um, definitely you're going to need to get in the whole songwriter world as far as like getting a network of people that are in the publishing songwriter space for sure. Chris, were you hey, going to say something? Well, no, I had a question, a clarifying question. Um, did they say that they're also like a performing artist? Yes. <clears throat> so they have more songs than they can record themselves or maybe that fit what they're doing that I'm just kind of throwing that. Well, I guess this in. doesn't answer the exact question, but I would say, <clears throat> even if you fail to ever find publishing industry success with other artists cover uh, recording your stuff, you could just sort of officially release your favorite of the stuff you record, but then also make demos and put that stuff out too, or do TikTok performances or whatever. Like there's ways to use that material for your audience that might not be the full, like fully produced package, but you're still getting it out there. That's what I would. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, if if they're looking for like, I want cuts on other records that will give me income, like in the more traditional sense, I would say you know, Nashville is a great town for that because it's so songwriter focused and it's easy to meet people that that 
are all about just writing songs and getting cuts for their songs. Um, How easy so, is it to get to from South, South Africa? Africa? That's a long, that's a long <laughs> haul. <laughs> I've, but, I've, oh, I've, I've gone from Portland to Burundi, Africa, and that was like, by the time I got that, I didn't know what day or time it was. It took forever. I do know of a lot of successful songwriters who don't live in Nashville, but will make a, you know, once a quarter yes. or even a once a year trip there for co-writing and networking and stuff. So, you know, but I don't know what their economic situation is, but if they could fly, you know, once or twice a year, that might do the trick. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the main thing is you got to get connected to that world. You don't have to live there, but you got to get connected to that world somehow. So a traditional publishing company uh, would, you know, I had a couple friends in, from college that ha were staff writers at publishing companies. They, much like we are, we typically get into the music business very much understanding the master recording side of the whole equation, where how labels collect artists to make records, publishers collect songwriters to write songs and they try to bring those worlds together and get cuts for those songs. And typically somebody who's doing that is meeting with other songwriters on a daily basis, having writer sessions and things like that. But there's other ways to do it, but you're going to have to get connected to a publisher. Now in the spirit of the episode that we just had, I can, uh, that artist Jake comes to mind. Mm. Um, and what he would do would just put that song, like, I wrote a verse, someone write a chorus, or here's the thing, and here's the chorus, someone write a verse, and do a duet or something, and just sort of make the collaboration and the open invitation of those songs into the TikTok sphere. But that's going to be a totally different approach, and probably not generate the revenue at first, but that that is another way you can invite people to collaborate with those songs. Yeah. Anything else to add on that one? All right. They're shaking their heads. No, for those listening. <laughs> they're, they're, no. no, I'll close with my, my opening statement. Just put them out yourself and they don't have to be perfect recordings. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, but it sounds like they're already connected to some, some songwriters that, that may have, some uh, some good advice for them uh, that have given them good advice. Like, yes, these are quality songs. You know, following a, a Mary Gaucher is, is like an artist that comes to mind, like somebody that has a very successful career writing songs for themselves, but also writes for other people. Um, I would check out, we've interviewed her a couple of times and she's pretty accessible online. She's somebody that I would follow and just follow what she's doing and, and maybe even ask her some ask her that question after a little um authentic interaction back and forth because uh, i know she loves helping people out and pointing them in the right direction as well and i know we're doing something with her at, at folk alliance so maybe we could ask her if we end up yeah. recording something. absolutely all right um this is so we've got a funny scam email and then we've got one that's not so funny we're going to start with the one that's not so funny <laughs> Hi, Kevin. Here are the details of how this scammer scammed me in 2019. I had a song I was thinking of promoting in 2019. I hadn't told anyone I was thinking of sending it to radio. I get a message on Facebook from Adam Knight with AOK -OK Records. <laughs> That's, That's only, funny. only good deals. They do only good deals. Asking if he could promote the song because I had shared it, which I do often with songs anyway. I asked how much he would charge, and he said $750. I asked which stations, and he listed stations that report to the Music Row chart, which are secondary market stations mostly. Because I sent songs to these stations via grassroots promotion, and it cost me over $8,000 previously, I did a couple of Google searches on him and his company, and I didn't dig further due to his low cost and my very busy schedule trying to move to a new house. I went ahead and paid him. The $750. And after about two days, he stated some stations had already picked up the song, but they were overseas. He stated he had not sent the songs to Music Row stations yet, but had just taken upon himself to add more value to the campaign by getting international airplay. He said he would finish reports for the overseas stuff in a week. By the way, this guy was the slickest talking scam artist on phone calls. 
Hmm. A couple days later, he said he sent my song to Music Row stations. After two weeks, with excuses for not getting me reports, though he said he would have them by then, I began to search and contact his artist on his so-called label. I asked if they had received what they expected from this guy. They said no. I asked if they had reported him, and they said they hadn't, and I asked why not. They just didn't want to do it because they were newbies and were afraid of ramifications. I chided these artists for allowing me to get scammed, but also because it meant this guy was allowed to run his scams unabated. I reported AOK and Adam Knight to the Better Business Bureau and made social media posts, and $750 doesn't make sense to take someone to court over in a financial sense. Um, and the kicker, I came to find out he dealt mostly with Christian music and even scammed people into thinking he was a reverend and a man of the cloth on one of his Facebook accounts. Oh, no. It was all a sham. And he used religion to hide behind, which makes his story even that much more despicable. The end, Brandon Maddox. And Brandon's been a, a, a follower of the podcast for many years. He, I've met Brandon and his wife at uh, the DIY Musician Conference. It's been a while. I think it was the one in Nashville they were at. That uh, yes, I've, I've seen this kind of thing a lot. Um, and I don't know if it's... Uh, I have seen it with the, the the Christian angle many, and I don't know if that's just because my band comes from that market and background, so I've seen those a lot. Um, I don't know if they're playing on people's thinking that they'll trust, but also that industry also still operates more in the traditional sense where radio pitching can be is, is important. So I don't know if that also plays into it as well, where the average indie artist is not thinking, I'm going to get on radio. That wouldn't work. Where in the Christian market, that's still is a big focus and something that that uh, even my band hired a, a radio promoter for one of our more recent albums. Um, so anyway, total bummer here. The, this one's tougher to find some of the warning signs. Um, but to me, the big one is the $750. Uh, real radio promotion costs way more than that. Well, and, and it sounds like on a previous campaign, he'd spent 8,000, right? 8,000. So that's, is, I mean, that's at least more in keeping with what you'd expect to pay, but it's still, I cringe whenever, sorry, sorry, Brandon. I, I cringe whenever I hear traditional radio campaign in the same sentence as indie music, because hmm. I think you could put that money to better use, but. Yeah, uh, it's, when it comes to anything related to radio, um, as a little background, uh, it was the album that we released in. 2016 where the last time we hired a radio promoter and we've we hired somebody that we had known for years all the way back to our label days and people that had been in that market for years and we had talked to a couple of them and one of them said 10 grand is the minimum and that radio now barely adds new songs at all so you're gonna be fighting against all the major labels and they're not even gonna get the songs they want on radio um and so they're like we can do it and we could try and see what happens, but you know, it's expensive. So you're, you're the, when you see something for $750, knowing how hard it is, it's like, it's not even worth that person's effort, the effort that they're going to need to actually make a dent in anything related to that. Um, just getting your music on the services that service those radio stations, I think is like 1500 bucks. Um, so it's like, yeah, it's expensive. So if someone's offering you something that sounds too good to be true, the price point is usually one of the big things that might be like, wait a minute, that sounds, this all sounds great, but that price, how is he able to offer it for half what everyone else does? I did get a little bit of a kick out of thinking that there is some corner of the music industry where being a reverend gives you an edge. <laughs> I think if I got an email from a reverend promoting a band, I'd be like, eh, I'm not sure this is, I'm not sure this qualifies you, but. Uh, I don't, man, I don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've got one more. This one we've got, um, the original email, the scam email is not, is not that uh, long, but he followed up and the response that they gave him uh, was hilarious. So this is from Daniel James. Uh, so 
he's here's his original message that he sent the the scam email said hey guys long time listener first time caller here my glam punk power pop band indonesian junk just got it's this hilarious scam email from someone pretending to be epitaph records or they spell it epitaph record of course i knew it was a scam right away but i worry younger bands could fall for this sort of thing thanks for spreading awareness of these sort of scams in your podcast so i'll read that but then he followed up telling them that he was interested and they, they responded and the response is even better so you know this one's typical hello my name is matt mcgreevy general manager i handle all business proposals and inquiries for epitaph records we reviewed your music content, and we think you have the ability to reach the next level of your career. We would like to offer you a production publishing deal. We offer special services from graphic design to professional materials. This will improve your overall brand value working with a distinguished international label. There is an endorsement fee of $500 for this to take place. Sincerely, Matt McGreevy, DW. I don't know. Wait, they're it's, asking it's, for the artist to endorse the label? Yes, what? that's what, an endorsement fee. Oh, so, boy. Um, oh, no. so let me see where. Here's his reply. So this is uh, Daniel's reply to this scam. Hello, Matt. I'm extremely excited about your email. I'm a big fan of Epitaph Record. <laughs> <laughs> we, also re re we also received an offer from Mike, Mike Burkett of Record Records. <laughs> And he only requested four hundred dollars. Would you be willing to match his <laughs> offer? Get him. Thank, thank you. And he signed it Dexter Holland PhD. <laughs> he just signed it some random name. Um I, wow. I, I said he um he's like, here's the follow-up. I, I wish I could show this on screen because it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, because they actually included a barcode. Um, in, but so it's like this kind of a list. It says, here is the proposal. This is their follow-up. We are offering you a four years contracts. I'm using all the bad punct uh, bad grammar, but can be extended afterwards. Services offered music distribution to over 280 plus stores worldwide music distributor to over 1000 plus radio stations worldwide music distribution to all top G DJs worldwide. Digital and CD marketing worldwide, submission of music to films, advertising agencies, etc., professional mixing and mastering, collaboration with any artist or producer of your choice worldwide. Wow. <laughs> professional artwork, professional music videos, and so much more, which will be disclosed to you once your res uh, registration and endorsement fee is paid. <laughs> Recording Epitaph record label, keep 18% of your earnings from sales to endorsement. You are required to release at least two EP album while under contract. There is an endorsement fee of $500 for this to take place. We accept deposit via PayPal, Cash App, Western Union, Bitcoin, MoneyGram, and gift card. There's not a single legit pay, <laughs> pay option there. <laughs> Sincerely, Matt McGreevy. And then there's a reference number. There's a registration code. There's a barcode. There's a submission number. And then there's a subject. It says career field. It says music. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really weird. <laughs> I would like to record a cover of Right Said Fred's uh, dance hit with Tom York. That hey, would be my collaboration request. with any promise artist. anyone, yeah. anyone. Yeah. Taylor That's... Swift, please. I would yeah. love to do a duet with Taylor Swift <laughs> to feature her on my song. On your song, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Well, see, that's what it's you just get for five hundred dollars. Extra... <laughs> That's what you get for the extra hundred dollars that you don't get from record records. <laughs> <laughs> you get that collaboration with any artist or producer of your choice worldwide. Yeah, uh, that that was so over the top. It's like clearly, clearly people have to know that that's a scam at that point. No label is asking for you to pay money up front. No legitimate label. Um, because there are actual like music business companies that are legit in the sense that they're not a just people, you know, trying to fraud people out of their money, but that their business practices still aren't the best where it's like, hey, you pay us up front and we'll do all these promotion services for you. Their business might be technically legit, but it's still not the the way that real labels do business. Um, 
So just stay away from anything that's asking you for money up front, saying that they love your music because they're just there to get your money. You said you don't think this ever works, but they're sending these emails. It's got to work once in a while, which is unfortunate, but. My band, we have an Instagram. We haven't released any music yet. We get tons of IG DMs that are like, hey, we heard your music and we love it. We haven't released yep. anything. <laughs> you know, there's no way you heard our music. <laughs> they're listening at your rehearsal space outside. The yeah, door. they're That's... listening through our phones. <laughs> yeah, that one, that one I get all the time. Um, yeah, love your track. I like, can't listen to this. You didn't listen to anything. Uh, yeah. Anyway, don't don't fall for those things. Uh, that's not how it works. Um, yeah. And thank you for sending those in. It's always it's always funny to see those and see what what people are trying. I'm hoping that some of these just don't ever work, but they're just trying to to mimic fraud techniques from other industries that are bigger. Uh, but I'm sure that there are artists that fall for it. Um, so don't. All right. Anything else? Final thoughts before we close things out? I guess I should throw out the email and number again. If you've got uh, an, a question or comment or want to share a success story or uh, anything else, a failure story, we love those two. <laughs> what didn't work? Um, you can email us at podcast at cdbabypodcast.com or you can call our listener line at 360-524-2209 and we'd love to include it on the show. And final thoughts, Rachel, anything? Follow you wanna... CD Baby on TikTok. There you there. go. And everywhere else. You everywhere at least got else. three plugs in. It wasn't yeah, the five you promised. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Rachel, thank you for joining us. Thank you for making your debut on the the DIY Musician Podcast. Uh, pleasure to have you. Thanks for having me. And I guess I guess that's going to do it. We'll we'll catch you next time. See you soon. Take it easy. See you.